Hi guys, so this is going to be Trading Casper 101. Um, I want this video to be sort of a complete holistic video of my methodology of trading Casper, how Casper behaves, how it acts, um, what we can expect from it going going forward, and then how we can take advantage from that um, and try and profit from it or try to increase your bag of Casper, which is which is my main goal. Um, I'm not looking to take many profits into dollars. I'm more looking just to accumulate and get as much Casper as I possibly can. Um, so yeah, this, this video aims to be sort of that holistic overview. Um, we're gonna go through Casper, um, all of the sort of technicals, how it behaves, how it acts. Um, then we're gonna go through all of the indicators um, and then we're gonna look at three different um, strategies that you can use based on these indicators. Um, so first of all, um, Casper, we're not gonna look at the technicals at all. Uh, sorry, we're not gonna look at the fundamentals. This is only gonna be around the technicals and um, how you can profit. So for those of you who don't know, um, most of you probably do, but Casper um, is one of two assets that follow something called a power law. Um, so a power law is basically a linear relationship um, when there is a log log graph. So if you see on the side, the price here goes up in factors of 10 and then the time scale also goes in factors of 10. Um, it, it goes like days from the Genesis block um, to to today. Um, and when it's compressed, it looks it looks like this with one of these cells being being one year. Um, and so you can see Bitcoin follows this pattern um, basically perfectly. Um, it's been the best the best model to predict Bitcoin um, over the past yeah well, the past cycles. Um, and Casper also follows it. Um, so far, at least, and it is following it very nicely and it's held up very well in this dip. This is a slightly old chart now. Um, we bounced perfectly, not quite off this purple line, um, but there is actually another line that factors the th the very lows um, and it bounced perfectly off that one. So it's still following this um, relationship very well, um, very nicely for now. So. The implications of that going forward are pretty huge for Casper. Um, if you just wanted to buy and hold Casper, I would expect you would do very well regardless. Um, if that's more your strategy and you just want to put some money in dollar cost average and sit back and relax and not really think about it, um, then realistically, if it does continue to follow this, you're going to be outperforming um, you know, any hedge fund that has ever existed. Um, so you know we'll go through it now if if you have say a thousand dollars so we'll go through we'll go through prices first actually so based on this power law uh casper is predicted to hit one dollar um or fair value purely looking at the fair value which is this yellow line here um it's predicted to hit one dollar in mid 2025 and then it's predicted to hit ten dollars in late 2027 um the fair value and then the fair value is actually expected to hit $100 in 2032, and then around $1,000 in, it's around 2039. Um, so, you know, from where we are right now, as I record this, which is 13.8 cents, um, they are some pretty huge returns. Um, as you can see, the returns are getting sort of less as time goes on. Uh, it's less easy to see on this, on this chart, um, in fact, let me get it up. Uh, so this is what it looks like on a log linear chart. So this is where time is normalized to how, how we experience it. Um, so, you know, as you can see, it is uh, over time giving diminishing returns um, and taking longer and longer to put in that next, that next 10X. Uh, so we'll do a quick sort of thought experiment. Um, if you have, say, one thousand dollars that you want to invest now um that at the minute at today's prices would get you seven thousand two hundred and forty one casper um and then let's say your goal your target is one million dollars um we can work out the price per casper that you'd need to reach that one million dollar goal so that would give it um one million dollars divided by the amount of casper you have um would be 138 so 
we can then go onto the Paolo bot and ask the bot what date Casper is predicted the fair value to hit 138 um, and that date is on 2032 so if you have a thousand dollars to invest and we do continue to follow the power law um, which I expect we will then you will be a millionaire in 2032 and you can you know play with the numbers based on your own personal goals and your own personal financial situation um, to figure out sort of how much how much you're gonna need and what your personal goals are um, however if you if you do want to accelerate this is a little bit um, then there is something else um, with this pattern so as we know Bitcoin trades in very predictable um, four year cycles so it has this huge bull run where it reaches the, the upper line of the power law um, the sort of maximum euphoria and then crashes down has these you know 95% um, dips well it's getting less but you know the first ones were were 95% everyone thinks it's dead and then it consolidates and it goes back into an accumulation um, and then it sort of takes off again and these cycles are at least in part caused by the four-year halving um, there are sort of liquidity cycle factors as well um, but we're not going to go into that now so you know basically um, the methodology is and the sort of thought process behind this is imagine if you had known about Bitcoin's power law and if you had known about Bitcoin's four year cycles back in 2013 or something. Um, so it would be the equivalent of buying Casper at the minute market cap wise is the equivalent of Bitcoin at one hundred and sixty six dollars, um, which we can work out was in. Um, 2013 basically 2013 going into 2014 so imagine if you had known about the power law the levels that it was expected to hit and then also the sort of timings of bitcoin based on the power law um, in 2013 that is basically where i see us with casper today because we know from the power law roughly the price that it is expected to reach um, and the sort of price ranges that it's uh, able to, to go into. And we also know that Casper has its own unique cycle. So Casper has a fairly predictable eight month cycle. So like Bitcoin, you know, Casper follows, follows its own cycle. Um, but instead of a four year cycle, it has an eight month cycle. And that in part, at least is due to the reward reduction of Casper, which is 5% every month. So it's a more sort of smooth, regular reward reduction rather than having a huge 50% supply shock every every four years. And so based off that, based off the power law and based off the eight to four month cycles. Um, yeah, so yeah, the so the full cycle um, is roughly eight months. Um, we'll actually get up one of the indicators to sort of display this now. The cycles are very sort of cyclic and predictable to eight months. So if we take this one as the top um, move of, of this first cycle to the next cycle, um, 230 days basically, and then this one to this one was 200, 29 days exactly as well um, and then you know we can basically extrapolate this out and try and predict where the next cycle top is going to be um, which is 4th of July uh, based off you know based off history um, so yeah using that using the power law plus eight month cycles um, we know roughly the range of allowable prices for Casper and we also know the rough timings um, of when when it will reach um, at least the higher prices you know the peaks to peaks um, so while Casper has an eight month cycle it also has a smaller four month cycle within it um, so these peaks here are the major cycles 
and then these peaks here are the minor cycles. Um, and the reason we call them minor cycles is because basically this is not really a true true crypto move. Um, you know, I, I say the words price discovery a lot. This was only a 400%, uh, sorry, a 100% gain from the prior high, which is not really what you expect from crypto. Um, because in crypto, when an asset breaks its um, prior high, generally you have this sort of FOMO effect kicking in and then everyone's sort of in disbelief, everyone jumps on the bandwagon and price starts to accelerate um, and starts to actually speed up. Um, you know, this this was one of the best um, examples of this. Yeah, this is in Bitcoin. So when it, when it did break its all-time high, then it's sort of this period of disbelief and then people just seeing it going higher and higher and higher in complete disbelief and then they have to jump onto the bandwagon, which causes price to accelerate. Um, and that's not what we see in these um, these mini cycles. These mini cycles have more of a sort of rounded top. Um, so yeah, this so this was mini cycle one. This was mini cycle two. And as you can see, price doesn't speed up. Price actually slows down, um, and it has this kind of rounded top. Whereas the major cycles. the major cycles actually speed up um, and sort of start off slow and then speed up and then start off slow and then speed up into into sort of a mini, mini blow off top. Um, and then this one as well, it sort of, you know, started off slow and then, oh, this one was kind of just a straight line up to be fair, but um, yeah, and then this one again, it put in this big move here, consolidated for a bit and then, you know, it was quite a big move, but it was, um, it wasn't accelerating um, into the end. This, you know, you couldn't. I wouldn't consider this to be a blow off top. Um, you know, interestingly, um, this cycle here, with the second major cycle, actually looks very similar to the twenty seventeen um, cycle of Bitcoin um, in in its sort of structure. You know, it, it was very, very um, symmetrical almost. Um, you know, this is very sort of regular shape. There's no kind of nasty surprises going on um, or like dips in the middle. Obviously there are dips, but it kind of follows this this curve up. Um, and this was very similar in this cycle here. Um, you know, it had this consolidation and then it sped up in a, in a very sort of predictable way. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the eight to four month cycles. And then, yeah, the, so the four months, um, basically the eight month cycles happen and that's from the major peak to the major peak to the major peak. But then the four month cycles happen somewhere between the two major peaks and generally it's about halfway. Um, this this cycle here and this cycle have been kind of um, accelerated or shifted to the left and not halfway between or well at least where we expect this next peak to be so um that is something that we're going to have to kind of look out for more data on and try and see if there is a more predictable pattern within that um so you can actually see these this um peak here and this peak here have been shifted slightly to the left um whereas this one sort of follows the regular four month harmonic because it was basically slap bang in the middle of the two major cycles um, so that is something that i am looking out for and we basically just need more data and more cycles to go on and this is why i've called this oscillator uh, version one because i um you know want the ability to update it and update it with the most recent data um so yeah that is that's how i see casper um it's predictable in terms of both price or price range um and it is also relatively predictable in terms of timing and what we expected to do with with that timing um which is interesting because no other asset except for bitcoin is like this um so i don't really see casper as an altcoin um i see it 
as sort of its own not its own separate asset obviously it is it is a cryptocurrency but there is nothing else like it except for bitcoin um no other cryptocurrency has this level of cyclical you know predictability except for when they follow bitcoin and they follow it for you it's for four year halving schedule um and four year sort of cycle dynamics so you can kind of argue are they really actually you know experiencing their own adoption or are they just riding bitcoin's coattails and because bitcoin moves that causes everything else to move um so with casper's cycles they are less predictable in my opinion um so with bitcoin cycles every four years you know there's that massive 50 percent supply shock but with caspers because they are a function of you know many much smaller supply shocks um they are more open to be influenced by sort of other market dynamics so you know if we were supposed to be going into let's say a minor cycle peak and then world war three breaks out or something you know just for an example then that would probably be much more likely to interrupt the cycle whereas i think it's much harder to interrupt bitcoin cycles um purely because of the forces behind bitcoin cycles are much larger with a much larger supply shock um however you know for now and you know for the foreseeable future um i think we can expect casper to to be fairly predictable um so let's now get into some of the indicators uh so and no in fact we'll go through all of them so these two bottom cas and top cas they have to be used on the weekly time frame um these two indicators have basically broken down um and they no longer really reliably predict price in my opinion uh, so the top band would allow for 60 cents um which i don't think will reach so it's possible price will reclaim this channel but until that time um i am not really using these these indicators are basically the same as um this this indicator for bitcoin top cap um and then there is also a bottom cap indicator so i was that was my methodology behind making these indicators um and for bitcoin they've held uh, really nicely um and it's been a pretty good predictor of of peaks however they have broken down on casper um so yeah i I don't really use this indicator anymore. Um, we will see what happens in the future, but for now, um, I think it's um, one of the least useful ones. The risk scale is another one that I don't particularly use anymore. The, this one was basically just me playing around um, with different variables and functions, and then from that, I created the risk metric, and the risk metric is a much better version in my opinion. Um, they just have slightly different variables and this one doesn't take into account as well um sort of time decay and the obviously decreasing amplitude of casper cycles so this one is more normalized um so we kind of expect even though in the future the moves on casper should be smaller um because it's giving diminishing returns in theory this indicator should stay coming up to the high risks levels so it's kind of normalized normalized for time whereas this one is not as well um not normalized as well so this another one is not really one that i use anymore however i do use the the risk metric um and then are there any others yeah so uh, all of the other ones oh, okay sorry this one this is the other one casper bitcoin power law um to view this one you actually have to go on casper and then bitcoin get the index so initially it looked like casper was potentially following a power law against bitcoin however it has now broken down out of these channels um i think i think we will actually probably reclaim them but in my opinion this is basically an invalidation of the casper bitcoin power law um you know we've now stayed out of it for long enough that um you know i think we can consider this to be an invalidation you know arguably you could take another one from here 
to here, but I think that's you know that's kind of playing a little bit. Th these are the main the main bands. Um, so yeah, I, I basically consider this to be broken down and invalidated. Um, yeah, I mean, interestingly, I, I do actually think we're going to reclaim this pretty strongly into the next the next major cycle. But again, this is not really an indicator that I use um, anymore. I don't think we can rely on this green line to be a reliable line of support anymore. So um, if you want to trade Casper Bitcoin, I wouldn't wouldn't use this one so heavily. Um, I am actually going to start investigating the Casper Bitcoin pair more heavily because I actually want to start flipping when I do try and sell the tops. I want to start flipping into Bitcoin instead of Casper because I don't really trust USDT very much. Um, I think eventually USDT is doomed to collapse and you know I don't really want to be caught in that. So I am investigating um, this one, but I haven't had a huge amount of time to look at it yet. Um, but yeah, other than that, um, all of the indicators I think are are useful. So I basically exclusively use the Casper USD um, trading pair, not USDT. So this is the index. Um, the one drawback is that it doesn't have volume data. So you can't use things like volume profiles, but it does have the full price history, um, which is why I primarily use it. And some of the indicators actually have to be used on it. Um, I think because yeah, they're basically because they're functions of time and the past data isn't included in the sort of Casper USDT pairs, especially like KuCoin and Mexi, then yeah, I don't use them very much. So I would recommend using all of the indicators on the Casper USD pair. But anyway, let's now get into the indicators. So let's first start with the Kai cycle top. So this one is uh, similar to the Pi cycle top with Bitcoin, which is quite a famous indicator. Uh, let's see if we can find it. Yeah, here we go. The Pi cycle top. Basically, it's a function of two moving averages. And when the moving averages cross, they indicate that the price is in. Um, it has been spot on for Bitcoin over the past four cycles um, or uh, three cycles, really, because this was kind of one cycle. Um, so that is why I sort of replicated it over. Um, so it, if we assume this this one was the peak. I know it did go higher here, but I see this basically is a dead cat bounce. Um, it caught this one very nicely. It did actually trigger on this second mini cycle. Oh, sorry, the first mini cycle. Um, it caught the uh, second major cycle very nicely here. Um, it didn't trigger on the second mini cycle and it then triggered on the third major cycle it didn't get the exact top, but it did get it on the move back up. Um, and then again, it didn't trigger on this mini cycle here. So this indicator, I don't expect to be perfect and I don't expect it to be this perfect in the future. Um, I don't think it will trigger the exact tops most of the time, but it just is another indicator that when the when the lines cross and when the indicator spits out that, that dashed line, that you know, you're probably close to a top or potentially the top is already in. Um, so, you know, if you want to create a strategy based purely on selling um, when this triggers, um, I think actually it would be a pretty decent strategy. Um, but, you know, that's kind of kind of up to you. I, I don't use it as a sell signal. I use it as a, you know, another indicator that just adds, adds confluence to sort of my my own strategy um, so that's the Kai cycle indicator the Casper USD Paolo bands okay so these yeah basically are the same as this um, but they actually have a two extra bands added um, I think one slightly lower than this green line and one slightly lower than this purple line again so um, this orange line, um, I basically expect to, you know, 
be a very very strong area of support um going forward and if we do hold the power law these bands can change slightly um but i think pretty much they're locked in now we might have to adjust them slightly so yeah with this indicator basically when you're at the lower bands um it's indicating that it's a very good time to get in um and then when you're hitting the upper bands that indicates that it's you know the market's a high high levels of risk so um when you're when you're coming down to this band um basically every time that's been a a good buy it's been the best time to buy actually but you need to note that we don't always reach it so for example this this you know bear market after this major cycle here or not bear market but move down um it didn't even come down to the the purple band so you know um i think it's you can't basically rely on on hitting this lower band every single time um it doesn't just you know seesaw from the lower band to the upper band to the lower band to the upper band that would be very nice and it would make our lives very easy but um unfortunately it's not not quite that simple so um yeah this again is a kind of price indicator and it shows the ranges that um that casper can go into and indicates when you're coming to the bottom of a move and also when you're coming to to the top um so very similar to that is the casper rainbow chart version 2 so version 2 is the most up-to-date version with the latest data and it is the only version i use i don't actually use the um other rainbow here we go um in fact i'll hide this one yeah, so this was the original one. Um, this is actually a slightly different function. This is a logarithmic regression function, um, which is not a power law function. Um, it grows slightly differently and actually slightly faster. Um, so if you see this top band at the minute allows for a maximum price of 0.51, um, but I don't actually expect us to get much higher than 051 and obviously when the next peak comes in which is you know predicted to be i think it was 4th of july based on based on that timing then this this will be actually at around 60 cents so i don't use this anymore i think it's too optimistic and i think we broke it here we broke these bands here and i think next time we're actually going to break these bands more significantly and start to come lower so much like if you remember the in fact let's get it up um uh yeah so <laughs> this what yeah this was the original one um and then they actually added another band below it here um this purple band that was not originally a, ba a band um bitcoin is dead uh so they kind of adjusted the data and just added another band below it um but it's that's not really kind of accounting for the actual updated change in growth that you're looking at. Whereas this one, the new Bitcoin rainbow chart um, actually does account for the sort of change in growth that is expected um, and updates it with the latest data. So that is what the rainbow chart version two has done. Um, I, ha I haven't just shifted the bands. It's actually updated with, with the latest price data. Um, and I expect this one to be pretty good going forward. Again, it might need tweaks, but um it's going to be pretty good going forward i think so this again yeah when you're coming to the the lower band that indicates that it's a very good time to buy and when you're coming to the upper bands that indicates that it's an area of high risk and you might want to get out again um you can't you know reliably predict that you're going to be hitting these these lower bands um so you need to account for that when you when you figure out what strategy exactly you want to use and then that brings us on to yeah the risk metric so this yeah this is the one that i use this one is very good um so on the major cycle peaks you can see the the risk level basically always breaks this 0 0.7 and kind of comes up this first one came up to 0 0.9 this second one came up to 
0 0.86 here so we can expect the next one to probably be slightly um, less but um, you know we are we are expecting it to break this 0 0.7 um, level so yeah you could you could um, base a strategy on this as well so sort of buying when it comes into the green and then selling whenever it hits the red um, and sort of DCAing in the green and then maybe lump sell buying uh, selling when it comes into the red um, that could be something that you go for as well and then we have the oscillator and the full model um, so these are less about um, price and more about sort of timing so the the full model will go over first which is this this white one here it tries to predict both price and and timing so the timing basically is obviously the cycles the major and the mini cycles um, and it has been pretty spot on so far so far to be fair um, you know this is this was designed with with basically all the available data that we have now so it's possible um, it can change slightly going into the future but um, basically when this model starts ticking up which it is doing now um, you're expecting that you're going into the next peak um, and so that's expecting we're going into the next major cycle peak um, and then the lower sort of range of it basically is the it is the lower power law band so that range when if if and when you ever come to this range again indicates that that's an extremely good um, time to buy um, and then you know price doesn't always hit the sort of exact peak that the the model predicts so here it would have predicted 17 almost 18 cents on this one whereas we only reached um, almost 16 to be fair 15 5 um, so you know again this can't be relied on as law obviously price doesn't just glue itself to this to this model um, it would be nice if it did but um, it's an indicator of both potential prices and also potential timings um, so yeah this this one I think is a very very useful model um, this oscillator here on the bottom um, is purely about timings uh, so it is synced up it's not quite perfect but it's very very closely synced up with the the full model one um, I think the peaks they predict are out by like a few days um, so this oscillator basically tells you what time the expected peak based on this model is or what date the expected peak is and indicates that um, it's possibly possibly a good time to sell at that point so I think that is all of the indicators gone through so now we're going to get into three different strategies you can use based off these indicators so the first strategy um, is using purely the oscillator um, when the oscillator hits the red line um, you sell and so the value of the oscillator you can see here um, in that blue it never quite reaches one and uh, minus one just purely based on like how a sine wave works but you can tell when it um, is at the upper line because it, as you see it goes 0 0.99999 um, so when you have more than two nines after the zero then then it's at the top level um, so that tells you exactly when when the top level is in and if you base your selling and buying purely off this um, top and bottom oscillator so you sell everything when it hits hits the 0 0.9999 level and then you buy everything when it hits the 0. Uh, or sorry minus 0 0.999 level then this oscillator from the start would have actually returned you over a thousand percent um the amount of casper that you have so if you started with 100k casper you would now have 1 million casper um it's not perfect and it doesn't um always work so on this one for example um the top was actually at a lower price than the bottom 
so it you know is not perfect and um you know you can expect potentially on a few cycles it won't work but um overall in the past it has been has been pretty spot on um so that is one potential strategy you could use um as another strategy based on the rainbow chart version 2 um so one thing that you could use here um is to sell chunks of your portfolio at the at particular lines so the this line here the third one from the top when it hits that you sell 33% when it hits this next line you sell another 33% and then when it hits the red line then you sell another 33% um so this strategy is kind of more um geared towards not trying to lump sell the top and just dollar cost average out um knowing that potentially we might not come in any particular cycle to the very top band um but at least then you'll have dollar cost averaged you know 66 percent of your portfolio out um however it's more suited to catching the um the major cycles than the mini cycles um so you would probably have to adjust your strategy slightly to maybe sell another 33% when you hit the yellow and then another 33% when you hit the uh, light orange for the for the mini cycles um but then adjust it higher when you when you're on the major cycles um and that way you can take advantage of the whole move and take profits even if you don't um sort of hit the upper band and price doesn't go as high as as we expect it to and want it to and then the same again for the for the dips you can um dollar cost average in so i would recommend starting at this light green so 33 percent at the light green another 33 percent at the light blue um sorry so 33 percent 33 percent 33 percent um and again, that way you can take advantage of the dips, but then knowing that you might not reach these these lower bands. Um, so, for example, on this one here, on that one, you would have only put in 66% of your portfolio um, because at 33% of the light green and then 33% of the dark green. But then you would have had some of your portfolio left over for the, for the light green. Um, so, you know, no strategy is perfect um if you're purely using you know a sort of planned out strategy when when this happens then i sell this amount when this happens i buy this amount um there is going to be no strategy out there um that is 100 percent perfect uh so i would recommend using sort of a combination of of these different indicators um to try and try and tell you and that's what i will be doing um i personally use more of sort of sentiment um, plus, you know, plus the indicators, the indicators are fantastic, but then also looking at, um, you know, when people start calling for sort of a hundred percent extra on Twitter and that sort of thing, um, that is generally a pretty good, pretty good indicator. Um, so if you guys do want more support on that and also to know my, my personal buy and sell levels, um, I do offer that. Uh, through my patreon if if you are interested in the in the higher tier but if you um, are comfortable and happy making your own strategy then you know it depends depends how much level of support you feel like you need um, so another potential strategy would be using the risk metric um, so you know as we see on these major cycles um, the price comes above the 0 0.7 level and um, hits these high evaluations of sort of 0 0.9 0 0.8 um whereas on the mini cycles the risk doesn't get as extended so came to on this one 0 0.56 on this one it came to 0 0.59 on the first one it did come pretty extended um but that's purely based on uh the sort of function of the indicator um so i don't expect that to happen going forward um, um because it's based on moving averages um there isn't history past past this point for the moving averages um because you know a moving average is based on a certain amount of time uh so that is also what i expect to happen going forward so i expect that we will reach you know probably around 0 0.8 
if not above risk so that would potentially be a good time to sell um you know a big chunk of your of your casper bag and then maybe buy back in when you hit this 0 0.3 level knowing that um you know it's possible that you could go lower but you've made a decent return um and you've caught caught the sort of meat of the move um but then again also noting that especially on this cycle here we didn't actually come down to that 0 0.3 level so um you know using that strategy again wouldn't be perfect um this this mini cycle here was kind of a bit of an anomaly <laughs> um the other two have been a sort of much more predictable um whereas this one was it was a bit of an anomaly um but so yeah they are they are three strategies that you could look at using um so with this risk metric selling everything at 0 0.8 on the major cycle and then uh, selling everything at maybe 0 0.55 um, on the mini cycle and then buying back everything at 0 0.3 um, yeah but as I say if you do, if you guys do feel like you need a bit more support and you want to know exactly what I'm doing then um, feel free to to check out the higher tier um, but if you are comfortable and you think you can um, sort of navigate this market using using the tools and using the indicators, um, knowing that no strategy will be 100% perfect, um, and you should probably use a combination of all of the indicators um, to tell you tell you what's going on. Um, then uh, that's probably the the right level for you. Uh, so yeah, I hope that video has been a bit more helpful and kind of collated everything about this strategy into one place um it's probably been quite a long video by now but um if you guys have any more questions please don't hesitate to ask all right cheers guys